we're breaking free from the traditional sermon format to engage in raw conversations about faith, life, and everything in between. So join us as we unplug from the noise of everyday life and plug into something more. This is NCC Unplugged. Conversations, community, and culture. Welcome to episode five. We are excited again. Hopefully you are as well. Back with another podcast. If you listened to our last one about missions, we're still in the same room here. I'm Jeff Terpstra and I have Matt Mastriani. Hello. And Allison Terpstra. Hi. And we're shifting our focus a little bit to Matt and the role that he has here at NCC and his role in technology, communication, all that he does. And so we're excited to learn his heart about those things. So Matt, as the Director of Media and Technology, tell us a little bit about what you do here at NCC. Yeah, so it it really encompasses a a wide net, if you will, of things that happen here at the church and outside of the walls of the church. Everything from the website, the weekly communication, the digital bulletin on Sundays, the graphics up on the screen, the lighting, the sound, the video, the live stream – just outreach as far as advertising and communications for social media, the sermon shorts, uh, Mm -hmm. just pretty much anything with a power button on it (laughs) or a screen. I like to say I kind of have a hand in and it's kind of a quick cliff notes of what I do. So you started how long ago? I want to say it was 2016 or 2017. Like we talked about in the one in the second episode, I believe, or third episode of the podcast, mm-hmm. right around the same time Joshua started. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, and before, before Matt was here, we had volunteers in some different mm-hmm. roles doing those things, but it was very piecemeal. Right. We right. didn't have a strategy. We didn't have a plan. We just kind of went with the flow of things. Mm-hmm. And if we needed something for the screen, we'd find somebody to to make a graphic or we would do it in-house. And so Matt's Matt's brought a new level to those things that we do here at NCC. He's brought a plan and purpose and intentionality where before we had none of that. And we're, I should say none of that. We, we lacked in that Mm -hmm. in a big way. And so I definitely really appreciate you being part of the team here at NCC and all that you do. Yeah, absolutely. So to, to go back even before I got involved at, at Norwin in this role in the previous church I was at, Even when I was younger, I always had the prayer that God would use the talents that he gave me to be able to honor him somehow. I didn't know what that would look like. A lot of people, again, and and this is probably the bad mindset to be in, but growing up in the church, you tend to think, well, if I can't preach Mm -hmm. and I'm not out there talking to people, like I'm not doing what I need to be doing to further God's kingdom and help out where I can. So, so fast forward all these years later and, you know, I, the, the answer to my prayer was, yeah, I gave you all these talents and I, I, that sounds conceited. I'm, I'm not trying to sound fool myself. Please don't take that away from this, but I, I gave you these talents mm-hmm. and you want to use them. Here you go. Thinking, thinking of technology and communication in a church. Why is that important? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's very important because it is here, mm-hmm. right? The technology exists just like most things in this world. You can either use it for good mm-hmm. or bad. And where a lot of times people may want to run the other way and say this technology stuff is new or kind of scary because I don't understand it. I look at it as, well, it's here. How can we use it for God? After COVID, whenever the live streams really started taking off and mm-hmm. everything, that was that the, the live stream is a perfect example of that. Before, when I came in, I wanted to start filming the services and just put them up on the on the website. Mm-hmm. But there was conversations that, well, if we do that, is that going to give people the excuse to not show up to church anymore? Which is a legitimate, legitimate concern. Oh, absolutely yeah. it is. Yeah, it makes it almost easy, mm-hmm. you know, very easy to, to have that excuse not to. So what I did was we filmed them, we streamed them live, but we never told anybody about it. 
So then whenever the service was over, I clicked a button and boom, it was up on our website mm-hmm. if people wanted to rewatch it. So using technology in that way, you know, it, it kind of helped streamline the process. Well, fast forward to when COVID happened and several church, every church was scrambling. How are we going to connect? How are we going to use technology? We have to, we have to do something. We have to use technology to connect our congregation in these times of separation. How are we going to do that? So I remember having a meeting with the elders and they were like, well, what are we going to do? I said, oh, it's easy. We already do it. And they're like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, we just have to share the link with people. So for Norwin, the transition from using the technology to posting it on the website after the service was over was a simple, smooth, send an email out. Here's the link where you can view it at. And boom, there you go. And that instantly, you know, using the technology to bring everybody together in the time of isolation. Now, obviously, we we fine tune things. It wasn't perfect from the start mm-hmm. and where we're at today is so much better production wise and quality wise than where we were back in 2020. Now, in the missions podcast, which everybody should go back and listen to. Best podcast ever. Yeah. (laughs) We talked about how when missions is supported in a strong program, team, committee, whatever you want to call it in the church, that all the other ministries grow and are able to be better because of that. Would you agree with that as far as media i feel like you can't say no to that (laughs) what (laughs) kind of question is that but that that's how i view media is like when media and tech like there's such a good support ministry and they Mm -hmm. allow all the other ministries to do what they've been called to do well i know from a mission standpoint i really do appreciate the tech and media team because when we have missionaries come in they're coming in with no knowledge of how the church operates. Right. So they may request certain microphones. They may request certain connections so that they could show slides or show a video. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I don't have to figure that out every time. And I can just ask you. And in, in talking about the tech ministry, so I I feel, I don't know if I feel bad, but a lot of times, because I'm the director of it, everybody, Oh, you do such a great job. But I have, the best team of people mm-hmm. that work on the tech team, whether it be the co- running the slides, the live stream, the audio, and just other various, the the digital bulletin that we do. I have a team that works on that every Sunday and everything. So I just, I, I want everybody to know it's not just me. Mm-hmm. I, I may be, have that director tag in front of my name, but that I could not do what I do without that team. And yeah, whenever whenever we have missions in, and not in a bad way, but it always keeps us on our toes, especially mm-hmm. when we have missions come in, missionaries come in to present, because we don't know ahead of time what they're bringing, mm-hmm. what they're using, how that's going to look and everything. So so I, I love the fact that the team that we have can think quickly and accomplish the goal of getting what we need from the missions up on the screen or, you know, on the live live stream or just, you know, pump is something is what seems as simple as the, the microphones, which is a very fast, complex system. But yeah, yeah, it's it's really neat to see all these different teams in the church work together. One thing I really appreciate about the tech team, and I I'm sure you're leading them in this, is is the the standard of excellence that you guys try to try to achieve with everything? It's one thing to say, yeah, we'll do a live stream and put a video camera, you know, in the aisle and mm-hmm. just kind of point. It's a whole nother thing to have multiple cameras. And some might say, well, that's unnecessary. Multiple cameras, special lighting, uh, microphones that pick it up better, different audio channels that go to the live stream and not in house. It's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. It's yes. a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of effort, more volunteers, but we do it because we believe God deserves it. And we believe that those that are watching will have a better experience. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to hear better. We'll be able to uh, feel like they are part of the service if we're able to offer it in that way. There's a verse, and I know the context of this verse isn't about tech teams and churches, mm-hmm. but I think the principle applies in Colossians uh, 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human ma- masters, since you'll know you'll receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. 
It is the Lord Jesus Christ you're serving. Can I interject real quick? Yes. That is my favorite scripture. I wear a bracelet with it on there. Okay. And for my my company email for the sign shop that I run, that is that scripture is in the in the signature of every email mm-hmm. I send out as well. Excellent. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Act and work as if you're working for God. Yeah. And the the principle is to remind ourselves that I don't want to say God is watching like it's a threat, <laughs> but God is watching how we honor him. And especially when we think about church work, mm-hmm. you know, Matt, if if those listening don't already know, Matt owns a sign shop over in Trafford. That's his that's his job. That's how he supports him and his family. And so he also has a job here at the church, part-time, doing tech stuff, more than part-time. But you know, and I know your work here at the church is even more important because it has it has kingdom impact. Yes. And you try to do kingdom impact, like you said, your your signature on your email has that Bible verse. And so I know you expand God's kingdom even through your what we might say day job, your full time job. And so when I see the tech team working at things where, man, this is frustrating because it just doesn't sound right. We need to tweak it a little bit more, or this graphic is is good enough, but is it is it good enough? Is it the best we can do? Sometimes I just want to say, look, just. Just be fine with it. Be okay with it. But in reality, this verse is telling us, like, we always re- remind ourselves that it's not just about us saying it's enough. Mm-hmm. It's that that we're honoring God, that we're making kingdom impact with it. And so we we remind ourselves with this verse and others that what we do matters. Right. It's, it's mattering to God's kingdom. And so we want to do our best. And there there can be debates and arguments about what the best is and whether this should happen or not. And those are great as long as we continually remind ourselves with that in mind. Yeah. I I carry a very heavy weight based off of that. Like whenever you sit back and realize, like yet you have the realization of what I'm doing can help impact the kingdom of God. And again, we all have a part of in the body. And not everybody's going to be a preacher. Not everybody's going to go on mission trips. Not everybody's going to do. And I think sometimes in the church, what we do, we look at the other people that are doing things that we don't do, and we Mm -hmm. measure ourselves up to that. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing to do. I mean, it's awesome. Again, the Bible says we all play a, a part. We all have a body part in this whole entire body of Christ. So use your talents. And whenever I sit back and you know, in in the world, people like, oh yeah, I do this with tech or I do that with tech. But then, whenever you transition that into church, and you sit back and you're like, wow, like I'm allowing a shut in, or I'm allowing somebody. We have people watching our live stream across the country. Like it, it blows my mind. But like, is that the first time they're hearing about Jesus ever mm-hmm. from here in North Huntington? Mm-hmm. So I try to strive for that excellence. We don't always hit it, obviously, but that's one thing I love about this church is in in the leadership and the congregation and the support is whenever we looked into, you know, what we needed to do when, again, going back to COVID, COVID was such a, we all know this, but COVID was such a ginormous shift Mm -hmm. in the way we do everything for the most part. We had things piecemealed together before and the leadership came and said, we know this is going to be a vital part. Again, going back to the mission podcast that we did last week, where we have one thought of what missions is, but we kind of need to refocus that and and look at what it really is. It encompasses everything. So we had an idea of what tech looked like in church, and then COVID totally blew that up. So the leadership came and said, what do you need on your end? in order for us to put on the best service possible. And so me and the tech team, we went to work and we said, you know, we need, we're going to need this, 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 and this. And I had a plan. I had to present it all to them. And I had a plan because it was a lot of money (laughs) to do like a multi-year process. Like we'll do the lights one year, the video one year, and just build from there. And they said, no, this is so important to like where we are right now. And moving forward, like we're going to do it all right now, which just floored me. But we did it, and and hopefully you can kind of see the the fruits of all that. 
I like what Jeff said earlier about kingdom impact and going back to missions, which I'm just going to do with every conversation. So get ready for it. I think we, that's what missions is becoming is not just evangelizing and Bible translation and the things that we would traditionally think, which are well and good, but like, please don't stop doing that. But it's kingdom impact. And I think, and we even support a mission on a month to month basis that good news productions international yeah, yeah, and they create media so missionaries can show films about Jesus. And I feel like that's a good way to kind of define media and tech is you are missionaries, but you were operating out of a lens of what is your kingdom impact. Mm -hmm. So talk about COVID a little bit. You, you mentioned it. I've heard some say that COVID made us jump into a lot of technology, whereas before we were like hesitant to mm -hmm. do some of those things and really pushed us forward several years in the church to really catch up to maybe where other organizations were. And it's not about the church being like other organizations, but it's using technology to its capacity. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, like you said, there's maybe some fear to it and different things. What are some of the benefits you've seen from us now Hey, we got we got a live stream. We do sermon shorts. Man, we're on a fifth episode of a podcast. What are some you mentioned people all around the country watching? What are some other things that you've seen the impact of because mm -hmm. of us and our advancement in technology? Yeah, community. Mm. It, to to sum it all up. Well, those sound opposite though, right? Technology and community don't sound like they typically go together. If you use it the wrong way, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, using it the right way, absolutely. Uh, you know, we just launched the uh, the Right Now Media membership mm -hmm. for the congregation here. Obviously, we're using media and technology. We're bringing people together. They can watch the same devotion, the same uh, video together. There's options in that to do like a live stream watch party, watch party, yeah. if you will. Yeah, yeah. But I'm watching one right now with Kyle Eidelman that is essentially the role of technology in the church. And one of the first episodes was that exact thing. Like we're we're using it to bring people together. But yet in the worldly view, technology like pulls people apart mm -hmm. because you're isolating yourself and everything. And there that can happen. That is dangerous. But you have to you have to have that intentional mindset on what you're going to do with it. When we do the sermon shorts, I one of those things that like uh, 60 second videos on social media, whatever, right? 60 seconds. It's not going to have that big of an impact. I cannot explain to you and tell you the thousands upon thousands of views we get from that. And that is, I always look at things from the outsider's perspective, somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Like there's a 60 second clip. Unfortunately, our, our attention spans are, are dwindling by <laughs> every day, but a 60 second clip for somebody that may know nothing about Jesus or have a certain view of Jesus that is the wrong, the wrong way. So yeah, this, it, bringing all this together creates that community. The one thing too that I absolutely love whenever we get the connection cards on on a Monday we get a report the amount of people that come to the website first. They've never visited Norwin before. They come to the website kind of see what we're all about. And then most of the time they'll watch a couple live streams. <laughs> leading up to coming here. And then again, they get a good idea of what Norwin is about and, and how we go about doing things. And then they finally step foot through the door. But yeah, I just love seeing the comments come through like, oh, we watched the past several weeks on the live stream and now we made it into the church. And, you know, that's just that that makes the tech team again, like we have an impact on what we're doing. Yeah. And I hear time and time again, people sick people in the hospital, wherever they might be for for weeks or a month, and they still felt connected. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's a huge part, especially during those times when people aren't feeling good in their home for different reasons, they're lonely, and this is this is their connection to the outside world for that for that day. And so just to be a part of that and to have you guys do that is huge. So thinking a little bit bigger, when it comes to the mindset of where we are at NCC technology, mm -hmm. we really try to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're on the same page with this. We really try to have the mindset that it's not us versus the world. Yes. Because we can give in to things and say, well, if we have a split second to catch their attention, then you know what? If that's all they have for God, then we're just going to let them go. 
or, you know, if, if we have to compete for attention with sports or other activities, you know what, we're not going to do a live stream. We're not going to put it on the website because if they can't make it here on a Sunday morning, then it, obviously God's not important to them. And so we don't want them to be a part of our church anymore. That could be a mindset that some churches have. Yeah, uh, It can be a mindset that brings you to a divisive place that says we're better or we're the faithful ones and no one else is. We have the true knowledge that no one else has. How do you fight that with technology and say, no, we want to be open. We want we want to grab their attention because we think God is worth it. We want to be spending time and money in these places because we think we can reach other people for God's kingdom. Is there is there something that you intentionally do to make sure it's not just about us here at the building and these four walls, but really going out and having a greater kingdom impact to remind you and others that who we serve is a lot bigger than just what happens on a Sunday morning. Right, right, exactly. So when Jesus was out preaching and teaching, did he just stay with the people that were already his followers? No. no. Good answer, good answer, right? <laughs> yeah. So he went out, he went to areas that many people would say, oh, this is making me uncomfortable. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Or look at certain people and say, well, they're not worth my time. They're not worth it. And that's the total opposite of what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. So again, using this technology to there are so many people on social media nonstop, right? That's just scroll nonstop, nonstop. Mm -hmm. Well, can we kind of, you know, slide in there and get a 60 second, you know, 60 seconds of their scrolling like, oh, wow, church. Hmm. Again, just just putting I, I think a lot of times as Christians, we think we need to have that like conversion of the non-believer like instantly. And if that doesn't happen, then either we did something wrong or it wasn't successful. Yeah. Or it's not worth it. I used to be in that mindset as well. You know, growing up in the church, I, you know, you you tend to look at it that way. But what I'm learning is specifically in this ministry, in this field, is plant a seed. And there's a thousand different ways using our talents that we can plant a seed. So if it grabs that person's attention, at least maybe they're thinking about it. Maybe something will happen a week, a month, a year down the road. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, yeah, I saw this on social media or I saw this video clip or whatever. And maybe that has them dive into exploring it more. But it, it's it's a good starting point. I, I do have a question, but it's going to be like really changing the subject. Sure. So I appreciated what you said about, you know, growing up in the church because I grew up in the church as well. And you sometimes and a lot of times you hear like if you want to do something for the kingdom, you're going to preach or teach or sing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I cannot do any of those. But I love what you said about like God gives us natural gifts and talents. And I think looking around at our church now, seeing some of the students and the kids, like you can see those things blossoming and seeing how God is going to use that in them in the future. And it's really exciting. So what would you say? I feel this, like you're getting ready to drop a huge I, question I, on I me here. Like it could go either direction here. Maybe keep it lighthearted or not. I don't know. But what would you say to little Matt? You know, when you were a kid in the church, what is maybe something you would say in regards to tech and media? Mm. Or how God has used it. Yeah. Gifts. I need to see a picture of a little Matt. Oh boy, <laughs> no, you him. don't want to see that. <laughs> I'll find one from your parents. Yeah. What would I say to little Matt? I would say that it it is an acceptable way to spread the gospel in using media and technology. And just because you're not a good preacher or teacher or communicator that that doesn't make you less than mm -hmm. of a Christian. And to be aware and kind of open to using things that you wouldn't normally lump together with church or Christianity, to be aware of those opportunities that are out there to use those talents. So, yeah, I would, I would encourage little Matt. <laughs> I guess, and to what would you say to – like the kids that are in our in our congregation right now, maybe it's very similar to what you said to Little Matt, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely, the with the middle school and high school ministries, 
doing the bridge service once a month. They started live streaming. Mm. They have a, a soundboard operator, somebody to run slides down in the worship in the youth worship center. It's really encouraging to see that. And again, it's not a, oh, I have to do this. They genuinely look forward to doing it. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool, too, is we've taken some of those students and they run the church live stream mm -hmm. for you know the, the big people church. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they run that every once in a while as well. So, again, it's really cool. We all have different talents. So it's really mm -hmm. cool just to, to see those talents put to play for God. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, if you're part of NCC ministry, we would love for you to reach out to Matt. I think they can contact you through the website. Yes. There's a web contact form there for him. If if you're like, oh, I could get on board with some of that. Maybe I I didn't think I could use this for the church or I have this talent I've never known what to do with. Or you just have a heart for it and you need to be trained or or just are curious about things. He'd love to walk walk with you through some of that or just talk to you more about using your gifts and talents in that way for the church. You know, we we really do believe what we're doing at NCC is the most important thing as we reach out and teach others to follow Jesus. And so if you think you can do that with your gifts, please reach out to Matt. We'd love to continue to do our mission and fulfill our mission. As we've already talked about, every person is part of the body. And and we, you are vital. We need you as as we live out that mission to our community and beyond. And so we'd love for you to reach out in that way or any way to get in contact with Matt or us about tech team or serving in any other way, because we know we've covered a lot in this episode. We really thank you for listening to this episode about tech and media and how we do it here at NCC and some things about tech and media in the greater world. So with that, uh, we will say thank you for listening. Really appreciate your attention for this episode. We'll see you again next time. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 845 and 1030 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 